All right. Welcome to the show. Dylan Pollard joins me today. He's a former professional athlete who has turned his attention and focus to consulting specifically with leadership development and culture training. He's dropping by to share some perspective, to chat about life, and to learn a little bit of, or uh, and we're going to learn a little bit about his soon to be released book, The Purpose Pursuit. Uh, always have a great time talking to him. I know him. He's a friend. Dylan, welcome to the show, man. Jake, it's an honor, man. I appreciate the time, dude. And I just put this together. I really love supporting what you have going on and excited to, to dive in here and educate the audience, give them some, some value and uh, let's get it rolling, man. I appreciate it, man. Hey, you are the first guest with my, uh, my new and improved background that is about 50% finished. So <laughs> I think if anybody's watching on YouTube, no, this is not the finalized state of the new background, but it is a, uh, it is a positive step in the right direction. Um, so, uh, we'll see how it goes here, man. But, uh, Hey, where are you joining me from today? I've, you're in, you're in Arizona, right? We, I am. Yeah. I'm, uh, joining from Scottsdale, Arizona, yeah. South Scottsdale area, kind of in the old town, uh, district, but yeah. Um, Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah. A little known fact, maybe for some of the listeners, I don't talk about this much, but I actually did my graduate studies at Arizona state. Nice. So I, I'm, I, a, I, I'm a, I am a sun devil, man. There you go. I love it. Okay. So you're not originally from there though, right? Yeah, that's right. The roots are uh, based out of Huntsville, Alabama. Um, so that's where I was born and raised, um, North Alabama area. And then, um, yeah, I went to high school, you know, there, um, school in Mobile. So, but yeah, the roots are in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And I used to go to Alabama as a kid a couple of times. We, uh, I, I grew up in Lafayette, Louisiana. There you go. And uh, my dad would take us, I think, I think we went twice. We went to uh, like Gulf Shores. Uh, area you got to go through mobile to 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 get to golf shores i believe i think it's pretty close to was that i-10 yeah i-10 so so basically mobile where where my wife and i um, met and went to college uh, and where i played basketball for for college uh, and then gulf shores um, my granddad had a condo out there so it's kind of a small uh small connection there but yeah dude we'd go there all the time for spring break and whatnot but beautiful underrated underrated yes. party spot man it's a beautiful it's a, beaches too yes beautiful beaches kind of some weird shoreline but it's like there's some white sand out there it looks real nice absolutely absolutely right. they're building that out growing that of course it's grown a lot in the past several years yeah so you're a uh you're a ball player man you're and you're for folks who are listening uh dylan you're six seven six eight something like that Six seven man, that's it. Six seven. I can't tell behind the uh the the, the Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, so you uh so you had an opportunity to play collegiate ball and then also to uh to go out and play professional basketball overseas. Maybe take me through that, man. What was it like growing up as a uh, child athlete? What was it growing up being like probably the tallest kid uh in your <laughs> school or grade or those types of things? Like, yep. take me through that journey. Totally, man. So, so basketball, like you said, that was, that was the main thing. I did play other sports growing up. Um, I mean, from swimming, uh, football, soccer, baseball, um, all, the whole, all, pretty much all of it, man. And then getting into uh, middle school, kind of still played all sports, but I, I, I like touching on this because this was kind of the, the foundation of um, starting in basketball. So um, middle school, um, sixth grade through eighth grade, I, I didn't play at all. Um, I, was, I rode the bench. Um, so it's kind of formulating in my, in my body, getting familiar, uh, you know, just kind of, kind of developing early stages. And so, um, there were some couple of good guys that were playing in front of me. So just like playtime was super limited. Um, but it was something for me, like I had that hunger and passion for it. Um, so going from eighth grade to ninth grade year into high school, um, I really started to develop this, um, hunger and like, you know, I was kind of frustrated, let down. So that was a passion kind of fueling that into high school. So eighth grade, uh, summer, um, going into ninth grade, like I said, I was, uh, kind of my, my, having a conversation with my dad, I'll never forget. He's like, dude, do you, uh, do you really want to do this? And so I kind of set my mind, uh, on that getting, getting, uh, better improving and, uh, going into ninth grade year. So that summer I just went grind mode, man. I, I kind of say Rocky Balboa style. And I just went, you know, all in did, you know, sprints, all that running Hills, uh, and just really got my, got my, got my cardio up, worked on my skill sets, was in the gym all the time and, uh, and just really worked on my shot, all that, uh, to really get to where I could really be confident in myself, confident in my game and, and, and really started, you know, thriving when I got into to high school, um, in ninth grade year started 
on the ninth grade team. Um, so I went from not playing at all to starting, which was, was awesome. Uh, grew up a couple of inches, you know, up to six, three or so. And, um, and then, you know, getting into um, the rest of the high school career, um, accelerated into junior year and senior year, kind of fast forwarding there. Uh, junior year, I, it was the first game. I um, got on a breakaway dunk. Uh, they threw the ball ahead. I got on a breakaway, uh, dunked it, and the whole, you know, the whole, uh, the news was there, all that. So it was on the front cover of the paper, um, the newspaper, and, you know, tongues hanging out, hanging from the rim. So that kind of accelerated the career, man, started getting some some, some traction, I guess, and then um, some confidence, too, and just continue to, to build that momentum. So going into college, um, I did, I played all four years, started all four years, um, and just really um, had an awesome opportunity to um, just grow, develop the, the mindset, the body. I was at my peak performance going into um, playing overseas. And so I played at the professional level, played in New Zealand and Puerto Rico. Uh, and, you know, that's just kind of the, the background there. Tons of cool stories, you know, ventures, adventures in New Zealand, Puerto Rico, two totally different cultures, but just beautiful culture, beautiful people. And I really grew um, and, and basketball became at that point a foundation uh, and a platform where I could really start getting influence, start meeting, um, you know, awesome connections. And then um, that's kind of where the, the things kind of uh, fizzled out, got married and, uh, and you know, started uh, transitioning in that new season, man. So that's kind of the basketball background uh, to an extent. Yeah. No, hey, you know, I've got a, uh, my son, but well, both my kids are athletes. Uh, they're nine and seven. So like I use that word fairly loosely, they're interested in sports right now and they love to play and they play hard and they play well. Um, you got any advice for, for a father raising kids that are somewhat competitive, especially my son, who's actually pretty hard on himself when his team loses and those types of things. Like what, what are some of the things that maybe I should be thinking about now that you're on the other side of the desk? Yeah. On the other side, man, I think, I think just from a, a father's perspective, I think um, that it's, it's really encouraged to, it's really powerful to encourage uh, and support um, not necessarily telling them what to do, but finding that fuel ways, ways to drive them and, and push them and asking questions into, Hey, is this something you really want to do? Kind of like what my dad said, and Hey, you know, are you, are you, are you passionate about this? Do you feel a fire when you get into this sport and do you want to, um, what's your goal in this? What's your, what's your why in doing it? Some of those things kind of developing those questions and getting that discovery, I guess, behind them. Uh, and then I always say like my format is EEA, um, empower, equip, and affirm. So that can apply pretty much anywhere. Um, you empower them for what you see inside of them, you know, and encouraging them, um, and, and equipping them with what they need to get from point A to point B along the process and then affirm them, hold them accountable to that, through that, um, through that process and then you know helping them ac ac accomplish what they desire to as you support as you encourage empower uh, affirm them so that's just what i'd say man kind of just kicking kicking that uh off um but just a, a couple you know, that's from, from fantastic fantastic yeah. advice here man i'm stealing that empower oh. equip and affirm uh yeah. and i gotta make sure i do that because i didn't play a lot of team sports growing up believe it or not like i wasn't much of an athlete uh as a young man i was athletic Mm -hmm. but I did not um, play well with others necessarily. I had not had a lot of repetitions of being on teams. I ended up seeking more individual sports like golf, like martial arts, uh, like cross country skiing, like things like that. Nice. Um, but uh, as an adult, that's one of the things that I like, I miss. I played on some pickup basketball games with friends or, or, you know, soccer leagues, like beer leagues that start at like 11 o'clock at sure. night. I did a couple of those and sure. really enjoyed the team atmosphere. I wish I would have, you know, maybe uh, gotten some of that perspective as a young man, but uh, I appreciate your coaching there, my friend. Yeah, absolutely, man. So then you get, you know, you're out of college, man. You got some good connections. Um, how does that, like, you know, let's cross the bridge into how you became uh, an expert in the world of leadership and culture training. I don't, I don't think it's a far leap with your athletics background for us to say like, this is why he gravitated toward this space, but maybe take us through what shaped your perspective. Yeah, totally. I, I think, man, just like that, that, um, opportunity to be an expert is just like studying it, studying it, implementing it. Um, and, and really, you know, I always like to say like on the leadership, side of things, it's really, um, if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead others, right, at the end of the day, and so having that 
um, accountability to yourself, holding yourself to what you want to accomplish, and uh, and then you know being able to do those things yourself so that you can overflow. Uh, kind of thing and into others. So um, for me, it really started um, from basketball to business. That transition happened um, over a period of time, um, you know, throughout, you know, past up until today, really, man, just just studying under John Maxwell for, for seven years or so, uh, a guy who's really uh, well known in, in the leadership space, written tons of books. But I think the pivotal moment um, for me, Jake, is like, going into this conference, um, the, a specific conference in New Orleans. Um, I'll tell the story because it was really pivotal for me going in from, from transitioning from ball to business. So um, finished playing ball, um, was married, really kind of just, you know, with, with basketball, it's, it's tough to create this. Um, when, when you leave basketball and you have this structure, day-to-day -day grind, you're going from, you know, practice, school, class, studying, test, all that. And then games, all that mixed in weights. So you gotta have this structure that's already built in. Well, leaving basketball, it was like, all right, well, now um, what's next? You know, so having create creating my own structure for my health, for my career, for my calling, um, supporting my wife, all that was just kind of new in this um, new season um, that I was entering in marriage. And 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 uh, so going to this conference, I was like kind of in a tough state um, mentally physically, emotionally, probably, um, you know, pretty, uh, <laughs> let's say probably around 300, 300 pounds. Um, oh, uh, so you, you, over, you, you gained some LBs, man. Are you LB, emotional eating? Dude. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, um, some mental health, uh, challenges. And so, uh, you know, what, with that, I guess with that, with that, it's like eating those, uh, chocolate chip cookies too much that, that the wife made getting in a marriage. So it's like, all right, let's, yeah. let's get, let's get to a point where, <laughs> you know, it's um it's just kind of that recognition that that decide the decision to 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 take that change and that shift. So I really how, like I said, how good are I'm, chocolate chip cookies though, bro? Dude, hot off the press, man. You <sighs> can't beat it. Like uh yeah, I just you, you can't beat a glass of milk, all that. We're uh oh man, that's that's yeah. my kryptonite. I, I it, that or, or like uh like when I emotionally I get the uh I get these like mug brownies. You know, the mm. powder that you just like mix a, like a little bit of water or, or milk sure. into, put them in the microwave and then some cherry Garcia ice cream on top of that. Mm. Dude, I don't know what it is about that fake synthetic, like mug brownie, but it's so sure. good. So, so sure. sorry, I digress. You're trying to no, tell me a story about it. your maturation and growth and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> dreaming about emotional eating. <laughs> well, Hey man, it's uh it's part of the story because you know, it happens quick. You know, you get, yeah. you get into the, the head, you get an emotional um, and, and it's just more like um, you kind of lose, lose track inside of, of what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. So going to that conference um, you know, wife and I were in a, in a financial challenging point, like kind of all areas, man, live in the backyard of my mother-in-law's house uh, you know, just kind of all these different factors. So, uh, you know, I was $12 an hour at a, at a, um, you know, little dealership there. So, um, this conference, uh, we, you know, really honestly, Jake, we were probably at our lowest, um, financial space that we've ever been in, in marriage. And so, I mean, basically my wife, uh, my mother-in-law, like allowing us to, to not pay rent until we were able to. So it was just, and that was like, you know, 200 bucks a month. Like it's just yeah. super, super challenged. And so this conference came up and, and, you know, I, I just, I really felt like I should be there. My wife is always supportive. She's a rock, uh, she's a rock star. And so she, um, she was like, Dylan, um, I really, you know, I, I really feel like you should be there. I want to support that. It was 180 bucks for the, for the ticket. It was in new Orleans. Um, and so, you know, going from Pensacola to new Orleans gas to get there, all that good stuff. So basically I'm sitting at this conference with $20 in the bank. <laughs> and so went all in pretty much. And I'm sitting in this conference, meeting incredible people, kind of getting fired up that fuel that you, you know, normally get at these conferences. And, uh, and, and there was one particular um, guy that came up on stage, spoke, he, he said, you know, I'm, I'm a women's championship, former championship basketball coach. Um, I'm, I'm in business now, all that. And he was talk, talking about activating your prey drive. And his name's coach Michael Burt out of Nashville, but um, he's one of my, one of my close mentors. And so what I got out of that is like this concept of like, all right, let's, let's go, let's make a transition. He said, it's, you know, it, it's time to, he literally says it's time to go pro, uh, in your life. 
And so I, I made that decision, you know, the, the word decision means to kill off, to, to, to basically, um, you know, shift and, and, and pivot into the direction in which you want to run opposite of like, what you're what, kind of that opposite um, force that you're pushing through. So um, kind of to sum that up, man, I, 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 you know, made that decision to go pro in business. Um, and so, you know, got to uh, the, the point where, you know, leaving that conference, I had $20 in the bank, dude. So I was like, how in the world am I going to get home? What's next? Like all this kind of fear and stuff. Uh, and so it's just kind of crazy. Yeah. Uh, again, I get, get to this, uh, this dinner at the conference and, um, I felt to just kind of buy this guy a drink. Right. And it was like, literally, I was like, I have $20, like, there's no way end up doing it. And so called my wife after that, you know, but it, it, it full circle, it ended up being a future business partner in real estate and stuff. So that was, that was cool, uh, to, to pan out, but, uh, I called my wife at that, at that, uh, it was a lobby of a hotel and I, I'll never forget. I was like, babe, I, I don't know how I'm gonna get home, but I, I got to find a way literally on the call. Someone taps me on the shoulder and says, Hey, I, I feel to give this to you. It was 20 bucks. It was just enough money to get home on gas, made it home. And, uh, and then really from there, um, you know, took all the things that I learned applied from, from the conference and, uh, and just really my, my career started thriving from there got into um, a sales kind of consulting um, gig that helped me for about two and a half years to build my sales skills, my conversation piece, you know, providing a solution for people that really transitioned into the heart for serving people um, and, and helping them find like what they're truly passionate about through a, through a solution. And so then I, you know, this is now four, geez, four, 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 four or five months ago. Um, I, decided to go in full time into my business, uh, which is elite leadership solutions. Um, and so now I'm doing, you know, leadership kind of one on one, as well as um, the um, kind of um, culture training development, you know, yeah. taking my basketball background where I've learned leadership skills and stuff with building teams and that connection with each other now to doing it, um, you know, as, as, a, as a career, as a calling, really. Yeah. So I say all that, man, because that's the kind of the, the, the business transition um, really, really, you know, um, kind of scattered there just with with ups and downs, highs and lows. And, uh, and here I am today, man, feeling passionate, fueled and, and um, you know, excited to serve. You know, the first thing I want to talk about uh, coming out of that uh, was a great story, by the way. I mean, it puts <laughs> us right where you are uh, yeah. today is um, you said this guy was it Michael Burt. Is that the name? Yep. That's it. Um, some parallel thinking here, because I had this epiphany when I was about 21 years old, which was that I'd, I had a friend, his name's Josh McCraney. We used to hang out back in the day. I think he's a lawyer now in Oregon. He, he did something great, man. He, he was a hell of a skier. Um, when we were in college, he a couple of years younger than me. Um, I think he was a year or two out of high school and, uh, you know, the guy was doing big flippy, tricky things and competing you know, at a, at a pretty intense level. Mm -hmm. We started talking about college because he was, his grades were suffering and he I just hadn't figured it out. And he asked me for some advice and we went out and got some coffee. And it was the first time that I can remember someone reaching out to me for some advice or mentorship because I had just gotten into the working world and I'd busted my ass pretty hard in the back end of my undergraduate degree. Uh, and he saw that. So I told him, I was like, well, I said, are you going to be a professional skier? And he goes, I, I, I don't know, man. And I looked at him and I was like, well, dude, I was like, you got to be a professional at something. You might as well go in on your education and take this opportunity that you have. And I kind of, I kind of went off and he writes me, he's one of the few people that actually hand wrote me a letter, a thank you letter. And he would went and he got his undergraduate degree in something awesome at uh, university of Oregon. I think he went and got his master's or doctoral degree or whatever the hell he's doing as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wrote me a thing back that said, dude, that was like some of the most powerful advice anyone has ever given me. Um, and so it's very cool to hear <laughs> that that is something that impacted you as well, especially from the, the, the mindset of someone who had aspirations to be a professional athlete. Mm. I think the second thing that I was really interested in was the mindset around $20. Yeah. Because I've been there too. 
Yeah. I know exactly what that feels like. Got <laughs> you got no money in the bank. And yeah. you're just like trying to wrap your head around it because it's like there's shit on the menu in front of you sure. that would bankrupt you. Yeah. And it's like a hamburger. Yeah. Dude, it's, take me back there, man. What's that? What's it, what's it feel like thinking about that moment? Yeah, it's, you know, Jake, it's very humbling. Uh, it's, it's coming to a point in a, in a recognition like you're, you're almost at the, you're pretty much at the rock bottom that you can be financially as far as like, <laughs> you, only, you only can go up from there, uh, you know, and so having that, I keep going back to the word, you know, decision, but it's truly deciding to, all right, we got to make a change. We got to make a shift. Um, we have to pivot into um, something where uh, we, don't, we don't really have a choice. Our back's against the wall. So that mindset I had just to, to, to make a change from there, no matter what, it was kind of that no matter, no matter what instance, uh, it kind of just put this hunger in me, man, thinking about my wife back at home, thinking about coming back to that conference, like it just, from that conference. Um, so yeah, a lot of thoughts, a lot of emotions behind that, but um, yeah, it was just, it was, <laughs> it was just something like kind of walking in that obedience to, to invest in this guy and just kind of that generosity um, behind giving and, uh, and it made an impact on his life kind of, you know, and then it kind of came literally full circle 30 minutes later and, and got that right back to get home. So it was just a uh, pretty, pretty cool, uh, you know, situation there, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. It's, uh, that sense of, it's not desperation, but there's a, there's a level of focus mm. that really happens to you. It's, it's interesting. You made that decision to buy someone a drink when you didn't have much money, but you just knew that you needed to spend some time having that conversation and it felt right. And I know exactly what that moment feels like, man. I know it's like, God, I really, my gut tells me I got to stick around that. I got to make this gesture that I've got to, I've got to do this one thing. Um, yeah, it's pretty badass, man. That's a cool story. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's just, and and that's my heart, man. It's like that, that generosity, that giving that, that true um, opportunity to impact. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, just really um, something that I've, it's part of my story, my past. And I just want to continue to maximize that in, you know, that, that one guy who gave me that $20 to get me home. Like I want to be that guy who does, you know, a, 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 even a $2,000 check at like a tip at, you know, Waffle House and just say, Hey, I want to bless you. And, and just see where that, you know, takes them not for my own, um, you know, glory or gratitude. It's just truly that heart of, of giving generosity, gener, uh, generously. So, yeah. So now you're, you're going out, you're working with individuals, you're working with teams. Like, what do you bring to a team environment from a culture change perspective? Like what are a lot of teams missing? And then how does your background as an athlete, as well as the education and experience you've bolted onto that? How do you, what do you see and how do you change teams? I guess. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think, I think in the business world, and I've learned this just from, you know, kind of being in it, um, in that, really in that two and a half year time span, just really learning, studying people, studying CEOs, CFOs, all the way to, you know, the, the janitor kind of thing. And so I, I really think that interaction really comes down to really one thing, uh, and it's purpose, it's clarity, it's having that inner knowing of like, this is where I'm at, this is where I'm headed, this is how I get there, clarity on, on that game plan. So I think for me coming into these companies, coming into, you know, even an individual who's just like unsure, need to discover who they are, where they want to be, those kind of things, just getting that clarity. Um, I, I always say this, and this is kind of tying into the, the purpose pursuit, the book, but it's, it's truly, we, we don't have a profit problem. We have a people and a purpose problem. And so as a, as a company, as a culture, you know, in these businesses, like people aren't studying their culture well, they aren't studying their people well, and sometimes they don't even know their own purpose of why they exist. So they're just kind of going through the motions. And so that that tires in the mud, that spinning is just, it's not getting them anywhere. Sometimes it's drawing them backwards. So, you know, I think just in, in my observation with, um, with companies, like they think that money is going to solve the problem when it's not really at the profit, it's, it's the purpose behind it and the people um, that you have to steward. So that culture really, for me, comes together when there's clarity on roles, when there's clarity on future uh, op opportunities um, and, and aspirations of each employee. Um, so kind of what I help do is establish, all right, the CEO, the C-suite, um, those, those individuals, 
giving them clarity of where they want to be, where they want to take things. And then from the, from the you know, base level, all the employees, like, hey, this is where we're headed. This is where we're at, clear expectations. This is how you can get here and grow. And, um, and then really getting there and accomplishing those things to get um, things fulfilled. And, um, and, and like I said, growth, growth as a whole. Um, so that, that purpose and that, that uh, people um, solutions and, and solving those challenges will you know, equal that profit. Yeah. Um, even further, um, more so. You know, I, uh, I'll talk to this from um, running a consulting firm for the last 15 years and working on large projects that impact human capital. I mean, that's, that's a lot of what I do outside of this podcast. For those yeah. of who aren't listening, I actually own a, a consult. I don't talk about my business hardly ever, but I own a, a management consulting firm called Delta Perspective. And I do fractured leadership, strategic planning, project management office redesign. And some of that as a result of that kind of work, the work in supply chain and project management process improvement also requires some aspects of change management and Mm -hmm. managing large groups of people through some kind of like organizational transformation or different ways of working or new roles being introduced into the business. What I found over the last three years is that COVID has thrown this wrench into how teams work together, whether it be virtually or physically, it has in our mind kind of demoted the, um, I don't know, the feelings of people, not like in a mean way, just kind of like overlooking them, not seeing them or hearing them or understanding them, not taking the time to ready them. It's kind of like, hey, yeah, this is the world's changing. So just keep, keep up. Like, you know, you know what I mean? As opposed to like really helping objection handle and support and make them feel included and make them have a voice. And if you cannot do this and a good mental image uh, that folks can have is like the projects or the operations of a business are like the bricks on the wall, but the culture and the way that people work together (laughs) is like the mortar that holds it all together. Um, Would you... Would you agree with that perspective that COVID's really thrown a wrench into things? And then maybe, you know, riffing on that, how have you seen it with the clients yeah. that you support and manage? Totally. It's, it's a, it's kind of a numbness. It's created this numbness yeah. to good word, dude. emotion, to the aspect of growing together. It, it's kind of a, a, a complacency numbness. Like it's yeah. just like people are just settling in. They don't really care anymore. They're just trying to survive, not thrive. They're working in a career, not a calling. And so they're just trying to figure out what that is. And in the meantime, they're just coasting. And so I have a, you know, in, in, in one of the, the pillars of my book, I don't call them chapters, but pillars, it's really like content, but not complacent, right? Like you're, you're content, you have gratitude for where you're at, but that's not the end all be all. That's not the end yeah. point. It's, it's, it's really the journey and the destination, the journey to the destination. So yeah. Um, being, being content with where you're at and like, hungry for t- getting where you are um, is totally different from being complacent and being stagnant, being set into just a role and, and you're just, you're there to clock in, clock out. So that's really like when my hunger and, and passion comes to, to play, uh, especially on this one-on-one side of things, culture is, is definitely part of it. But that one-on-one is like, I really want to lead people to be the best version of themselves so they can impact others and, and lead leaders and help them impact and, and be at peak performance so they can uh, create impact. So yeah. um, that kind of kind of like the high performance coaching aspect. But I really got to the point where in my basketball career, in my athletics, like I was I was peak performance, man. I was I was maximizing my potential with my body, my mind, everything. And so I, I really feel like that co- correlates and, and, and comes into play with the business world, because if you're not if you're not mentally where you need to be, if you're not spiritually, emotionally, all the above, then it's tough to perform consistently. If it's a sales role, like that's kind of my, my background. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not on your game, like it's, you know, you're, you're, you're missing opportunities to change people's lives and impact them. So I think that's, that's just kind of how, how serious I take it, man. And uh, from that perspective of not just the culture, but the the one-on-one side of things and helping them, dial in okay this is where i'm at this is where i'm i'm at this is where i want to be and then finding like who you are what are your values what are your morals what is your character what's things that distorted your character and your your ways you perceive yourself from the past 
and help that propel you to your future. So yeah. um, just some of the things, man, that I really have a passion for and, 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 uh, and changing people's mindsets, man, like just like not just changing them who they are, but like who they want to become and helping them see that um, by that EEA, you know, that I mentioned earlier, the empower equipment of firms. So um, that's just kind of what I've noticed, what I've seen and that high performance really can take you to the next level um, in your family and your business um, and, and all the above. Um, so that's, dude. that's my heart, dude. No, I, I love that. And again, a couple of things here I want to tease out. Um, I think the word numbness Mm. I it is the best way to describe uh, mm. what I'm seeing on, on my front as well, man. Folks are, it's not that they stop dreaming. Maybe they just have rust on like what's attainable. Like they haven't really, those gears haven't moved in a little bit. And like, they were just throwing such a pattern interrupt with COVID and what life means after COVID and the bombardment of new technology, whether it be the conveniences we find from software or the distractions that we find from, you know, new toys, new hardware, new uh, different things. But yeah, this, the second thing I want to cue in on is the complacency versus what'd you say? Content, uh, not complacent. Content, not complacent. And I've heard this uh, described my, my dear friend, uh, Aaron Allen Hondrino. Uh, he's got a podcast called the high value man podcast. If you haven't checked that out, um, folks listening, go and check out Aaron, support his podcast as well. I was just on it as a guest, but he was the one who taught me the term blissfully dissatisfied. Mm. And that clicked for me in the same way when you just said, you know, um, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I keep mixing yeah. up my C words. Uh, uh, no, you're uh, good. Content, but not complacent. Exactly. Content, but not complacent. I'm okay. Right here, right now. I'm not mad at me but I got places to go. Yeah. Like, that's how I, that's how I think about it. Like, this is not, this is not good enough, but this is good enough. That's, yeah. that's a weird thing to kind of wrap your head around, like giving yourself some grace and where you are kind of like where you were with that $20 once upon a time where you just had to, you had to probably say like, Hey, my right now is not my forever. Like I'm yeah. coming, I'm a freight train. I'm on the rails. I'm going in the right direction. This is going to pay off for me eventually, but damn it right now. I'm just the guy who's got $20 in my pocket. And that's about yeah. it. Um, yeah. I love that, man. So going in, you pour into these different teams. Um, what are some of the results that you're getting, man? Like how, how are you helping teams get to that next level, work better together, communicate more together, individuals grow, grow into new positions or grow in their enjoyment for their occupations what's that process been like? Yeah, it's, it's been a beautiful thing, man. Cause it, you know, you see the kind of the light bulb go off when it's like, all right, it's not just in it for me, it's for we. And so really having that perspective shift of like, I'm just here for, for me, for my family. It's more like it, it brings that inclusion into like the group as a core, because they know their role, they know where they're headed. And so uh, it, it creates that buy-in um, and that clarity um, to, to get where they want to be. So I got that, that light bulb moment, man, is just like, it's incredible to see like, all right, like when adversity hits, what's your foundation built on? Is it, is it greed or gratitude? And this is something that kind of I go into like on the stewardship kind of things and owning, um, you know, what you, you know, owning, owning the fact that like, you don't have it all uh, figured out. You don't have it all like together, but you're, you're building your foundation on that gratitude, knowing that like where you're at is not the, and end all be all but you're being present in the moment and being obedient to continue to pursue the, the things that you're passionate about and where you where you want to be at and and so I think in all that it's just it's just really um it's insightful to me to know that like when people have clarity it, it sparks their passion and their passion fuels them and motivates them and that's what kind of gets them to the next level so um yeah, man, I just, I think it's really um, something that, that I really uh, love doing. And so kind of back to that adversity piece, like when you do have that clarity, you're able to push through that brick wall or that adversity um, and really get through those things together as a team. Um, you know, you're, you're, you know, we always say you're better together. Um, and it's so true because you have to lean on your brothers, lean on um, the, the team as a whole to get through that and, and weather that storm. Um, and so, you know, if you're, it's kind of like, you know, going through a storm and you can't really see, well, if you turn off the light, you know, you're not, you're not seeing that full distance. Um, and sometimes it's a, it's like a lighthouse. Sometimes it's just a little lantern um, and, and getting through those storms, but it has to have the light. Uh, and I think that light is, 
unity, its its values that that you share with the with the uh, the organization and and, uh, and the team as a whole. So um, yeah, I think that that kind of unity uh, uh, also you know on the on the one on one side of things, it's it's purpose. It's giving them that clarity um, to to come together with who they are. So awesome. yeah, just kind of yeah. And you're uh, again, you use that word purpose. So I got to pivot back to the book. Yeah. The purpose pursuit. You've got a, uh, what February, you said February 23 yeah, is where you're shooting for next year. That's so it, what man. do we, what are we expecting out of this book, man? Is this going to be the, uh, is this the handbook for how to find purpose or is this a reflection on your journey and finding purpose? Like what, yeah. what's the contents? The content man is, is really getting to the point where you know who you are, and, and you know where you want to be. Uh, I, I, th I think of more when you find out and discover who you are, then you know what your calling is. Uh, and so that just that inner inner um, reflection on self where you're where you've been, um, your story, uh, creating structure around that story, and then, you know, systematizing that into whether you're monetizing it or just living it out. So um, I come I kind of stem it off the what I call the Pollard piece. Um, so it's it's pretty simple, but um, your passion and your platform equal your purpose. So passion is what fuels you, what motivates you. Platform is your voice. So when those things um, collide and collaborate, then you know you're walking out that that purpose and that calling. So um, that's kind of what the the overall um, format stems around is those Pollard P's. Yeah. So for me, um, that um, kind of going into the, the the title, the purpose pursuit. Um, I'm a firm believer in you, you know, you don't find your purpose, you, your purpose doesn't find you, you find it as you pursue the things that you're passionate about, your values, and, and getting clear on those things um, to be the best version of yourself so you can walk through adversity, have that clarity uh, in the midst of the storm and, and keep pressing on to, to accomplish, um, you know, the, the things that you desire and truly fulfill you. Because on the other side of um, the wall of adversity is success. And so sometimes you have to bust that wall down. Sometimes you have to just walk around it. So it's just assessing, being present, and then pivoting and uh, and and pushing through through to your purpose. Beautiful man. Uh, and this is your first book. Yeah, first book. Yeah, I put what, a lot of the, time into it. Um, what's the process been, been uh, like, man? Process has been uh, it's been a journey, man. You know, I think what I've learned, Jake, is as just, I'm not a, I'm not an author. I'm just a creator and, and somewhat of a, a storyteller that I just love. If I can share one message or one opportunity to change one person's life, it's worth every hour that I put in that thing. It's worth every minute. And, uh, and I've, I've been doing it. I've been putting it, formulating it together for about seven years. Um, just kind of over stories of my life, um, trials and tribulations throughout that I walk through. And it's, it's really not for me, man. It's just that kind of that one person that I have in my mind that really I can help um, not just survive, but thrive in their life. And then that multiplication effect, I like to call it, will help them, um, empower them to then, you know, spread the, spread the vibes, spread the love, the message, and, uh, and really be able to impact and inspire others. That's great, man. That's great. You, uh, you expecting like what 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 happens when you release the book, man? Are you going to hit more podcasts? Are you going to speak a keynote on it? Like, what's your yeah. what's your perspective on how you deliver the book to the masses? I think delivering it to the masses is uh, the the heart behind it is just really a platform um, for mental health, mental clarity. You mentioned COVID, man, like that. I think that rocked a lot of people, um, if not most everyone, just from the perspective of like, all right, when you when you like ramp up technology sometimes like it, it can be a distraction you, you kind of touched on that uh you know in, in a little bit earlier and so uh, it can be used for good but it can also be you know a challenge and and, and somewhat of a distraction and, and outside of moderation so um for me i think just kind of that really that heart of um having that um, mental health, mental awareness, and um, using that as that platform for me uh, and helping others discover and de define um, what they want to accomplish, what their why is, you know, why they're here on earth, why they do what they do, um, and some of those things. So um, I think it's just kind of the things that I've learned throughout my journey, taking those into principles and applying them to speaking engagements, podcasts, um, and I, I just really, I really have a heart for it, man. Um, and and I, I think that 
you know, people don't care how much, you know, they know, but until they know how much you care. Uh, and so my heart is just that people would see that, that, that I do truly care for that, even that one person. And, uh, and I don't, I don't chase after the 99, I chase after the one um, to create that impact to the rest of the 99. So um, it just takes that one, one impact, that yeah. one person to change the world. You never know, you know, what you're going to say, how it sticks until you walk in obedience, you take action and you say it. Um, and I think that, you know, I always like the, um, I have the heart of one of that things behind purpose, Jake is, is like this world in the personal development space, things like that. Like people are all about taking action, but my heart is like, <laughs> it's good to take action, but which direction are you headed? Is it aligned, is it aligned with your vision and values that you have um, for your story and your mission? So um, yeah, I think, I think things like podcasts, I think things like speaking engagements, uh, maybe even a Ted talk on like really finding um, who you are and, and, uh, and what you want to accomplish, not identifying with the things that you do. They don't define you. They help you be more clear on, um, your skill sets, morals, values, uh, which takes you the, the longevity in, in your character. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And you're working with folks today on a one-on-one basis and a, uh, and a mastermind basis as well. Like, will you give us that outlay? What's it like to work with you? How do you approach um, pouring value and supporting others? Yeah, love that, man. Um, on the one-on-one basis um, with ELS, Elite Leadership Solutions, um, I take it in a, in a span of 150 days. So it's a little bit different approach. I like being different, set apart. Uh, and, and so I really, um, that first 50 days is seven weeks, essentially. Um, and that first 50 days is, is dialed into creating a roadmap, creating a roadmap based on your story, um, your structure, um, and, and then kind of, well, I, I would say this, it, it's kind of creating um, your clarity on based on your story. So, you know, your character, morals, values, where are you at? Where do you want to be defining that? Um, what do you want to accomplish? What are, you know, um, the skill sets that you want to grow in? What are the skill sets that you, um, maybe the, the, the character traits that you want to, to you know, reflect and, and grow in and grow out of? Um, so I think that that first 50 days just helps to get that roadmap of like, hey, this is what I want to accomplish. This is what I want to do. Um, and sometimes they don't know it going into that. So again, kind of creating that clarity, first 50. Next 100 is implementation, essentially. So it's just literally taking action on that roadmap, getting clearly defined on like where they're headed, where they want to be, and then just just getting there. So I am that accountability. I'm that voice of, of, uh, of affirmation sometimes. And just really helping them walk through that journey of 100 days and accomplishing the one thing that they want to accomplish in, in that time frame. Um, and so I really feel like in this coaching space, there's a lot of coaches. There's a lot of people who have, you know, what they feel like are, um, um, you know, their voice. But in, for me, man, I think my biggest voice is my, my listening skills, my ability to listen in, to hear your heart, to hear where you're at. And then, you know, when it comes to time, like give my two cents, but literally listening is, is from my perspective, one of the biggest tools um, for helping them just kind of think through it, talk through it. And then, all right, this is the game plan for where we need to take and implement um, into action that, that hundred day time span. So um, that's six months. So in that six months time frame, and they should have clarity on at least their next step into action that's aligned with, with where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, reflecting, in this space, you've been coaching people, um, that I know from personal experience does not come without growing yourself Mm -hmm. in different ways. What's the, what's the biggest way that you've grown in the last two or three years? Yeah. And I think, I think I've, I've had an incredible, um, like I've really spent a lot of time in the past on my mindset, but now it's truly my, my mental health behind the mindset. So like that consistency, building that muscle over time, so for me, I mean, just like the, the thing that's been a game changer is that, um, excuse me, the uh, awareness to like, I, I do like cold plunge sauna hot tub, you know, um, five, five thirty, I think it was this morning, got up, got in the rhythm um, and, and really just kind of that meditation mindset journaling, um, but also that, that recovery phase of just like blood circulation. And I, I just think that's really been a, a main shift for me. Uh, is not only the mindset focus, but the mental health um, game. And, and that's just one of the things that I really um, have um, trying to get in a rhythm of. 
uh, outside of, you know, the, the gym, things like that. Um, I think that I just like that, that cold plunge sauna, hot tub rhythm. And oh, I do too. Man. For me. Um, it, it's money, dude. So do you have a, uh, what, what are you doing for your cold plunge? Like, do you have a, uh, one that makes its own ice? Are you doing the buy bags of ice and the horse trough? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, it's funny, man. We were on the way to, we we're doing a project here at the house and, uh, and, and at Home Depot and we passed by a trough and I looked at my wife, I was like, Hey, can we just have a cold plunge at the house? <laughs> she just, she just laughed, but I, I do it at uh Biltmore lifetime. There's a lifetime up here in, in AZ. And so they, have, they actually have a cold plunge. So um, it's, it's paying a, paying a pretty penny, but when we're talking about environment, we're talking about business and, and people impacting you and, and your and environment. I'm around, you know, people like Robert Kiyosaki, some of these guys who, who go to this gym and it's a really cool environment, but that cold plunge is there. And so I, uh, I just kind of have that, that circuit and it, it's, uh, it, that's it's, great, man. It's, it's money. Dude. Great. I'm, I'm, I'm into that stuff, man. I I'm a big believer in the cold. I'm a big fan of the sauna as well. It's been a couple of days. My, so my wife's a, uh, she's a fine line tattoo artist. So nice. she does like, like tiny tattoos. She's been tattooing my legs over the last couple of months. So what I find myself doing is like, I'll get tattooed and then I can't go to the sauna mm. or I can't submerge it underwater for periods of time. Uh, so I'm out of practice right now because she's been practicing uh, on growing her craft on my legs. <laughs> Because <laughs> we just, we do all the, you know, the stuff that's uh, difficult as she's building new skills and, and uh, that's been, it's been fun, but it's, it's definitely taken me out of the rhythm of, of the cold plunge uh, and the sauna. What's, what's your biggest benefit for that? I know you said clarity, but like, how long ago did you get into that stuff? Yeah. You know, I, I, I was in, I mean, I've been, I've been in it like um, most of my athletic career now, just kind of getting back, like kind of what you're talking about, like getting back in the swing of things. Um, so I've been doing it for, for a while. I mean, dude, even just like basketball um, and, and just the, the, the toll that it takes on the body, um, you know, sometimes three a days. So literally I do like two ice baths a day and it'd be way too much time because I'm what I'm learning more about like time you spend in the ice, but they would do like 15 minutes and just like, you know, just, basically just ice water like so I, I don't know man it's just it, for me um getting back in that swing of things and doing it in a in a rhythm and a routine uh, has been has been really powerful but yeah it's been uh it's been probably all my life but you know in that past two or three years um where that that challenge with with the mental health with the energy levels things like that um I, I you know slumped off but now I'm kind of back in that that rhythm man I love it my man hey as we're wrapping up just want to make sure that there's nothing that I didn't cover today that maybe you were interested in talking about things that you have that are exciting that are coming up or just a perspective that you wanted to share with my audience. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I mentioned like the, the Kingsman, the, the mastermind group. I, I, I just thought to, to touch on that real quick, Yeah, but, for sure. Um, really my heart in that man is just to create that community, that accountability, that glue, um, with, with brothers who are like-minded with vision and values. So Kingsman is, a, is an opportunity for you know, us to walk through life together, to grow together, to, um, and also to go together, right? When you grow together, you have opportunities to go to business together, to go through, through life. And, um, and I think those, those times around the round table, the, the, the conversations we have, um, really have that awareness to, to um, just, just grow and sharpen as, as iron sharpens iron. So um, that is called the Kingsman. It's something where I really um, love just empowering, equipping and, and affirming men and them doing the same to me. And it's not, not that like one way street. So it's just like that intentional time, um, and that unity, um, and the community creates that unity. Um, so just creating that space for, for men to, to collaborate, to grow together and, and, uh, and go together. So yeah, that's, uh, that's one thing. And then, um, I think it's just, I don't know, man, it's just been an honor to, to have a conversation with you, dude, to, to just, uh, just collaborate and, I'm excited to continue to, to grow together, my guy. Yeah, for sure, man. I uh, You're one of those people that I always look forward to uh, chatting with. We've had an opportunity to talk a few times over the last couple of years, um, and I've gotten to get to know you a little bit better, man. And I can't tell you, I am so excited uh, for the release of your book. I'm excited for you to continue to grow uh, and uh, continue to have opportunities to drop by podcasts and to speak because you definitely have a great message, my man. Um, and I know that your heart is connected to it. So, Hey, if you're listening, uh, make sure to go out and check out Dylan Pollard. Dylan, where's the best places to find you on social media? 
Yeah, social media. Um, it's uh, the handle is uh, on Instagram uh, at d i l l o n p o l l a r d underscore. That's first and last name underscore. And then, um, yeah, I mean through through LinkedIn, Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, and then the website uh, eliteleadershipsolutions.net. Um, you can check out some of the things that I do there, and it's really um, and it's kind of early stages developing, refining that. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm uh, I'm an open book. I have a huge heart for for people, caring, loving, serving, and I just want to see people grow, thrive, and not just survive. All right, Dylan, thanks for joining me today, today, brother. And then uh, looking forward to the next time you and I have an opportunity to uh, share some time together, man. Take care. Yes, sir. Let's grow.